Hi, this is Open Stutter. My name's Mark, and today I'll be having a conversation with a good friend of mine. Nadia, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, um, my name is Nadia Alabate and I'm a speech pathologist and I'm also a person who stutters. I'm currently living in uh, Doha, Qatar, but soon I'll be moving to Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm originally from Kuwait, but um, I, I'm also from, from the States. So I'm half American, half Kuwaiti. Um, yeah, and um, that's about me. Awesome, Nadia, thanks so much for taking the time to, for this. Uh, I know you're in Qatar right now, so there's like, what, here it's 1230? What time is it there? It's 8.20 PM. Okay. So like about that, yeah. Eight <laughs> hours, yeah. <laughs> um, so Nadia, you you were b b b born in Kuwait, and you lived there for until you were what, twelve or thirteen? Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, I'm curious if you could talk about your experience growing up as somebody who stutters. Um, well, I feel like when I was little, I knew that there was something different ab ab about me, um, but it was always something that I felt like I had to hide, like nobody really knew that I stuttered. The only way that it would show up is me having, like, it's like me crying and at, at school mainly when I'm asked to read allowed or do something and I and, and and I felt like I couldn't communicate so in Kuwait like it was just kind of known like I have issues at school sometimes where I would cry but nobody really addressed it and I never really received therapy for it um so it wasn't really addressed and I did a I did a a good I did a good job managing to the best of my ability and basically the way that I did it was by hiding it mainly so I never really addressed it until I moved to the states and then during during that transition uh my stuttering increased a lot and it's to the point where I was just blocking all the time and then at that point my mom ended up taking me to uh therapy, which didn't help. And um, I remember the therapist said, oh, just hold on to the, the just uh, squeeze your hand or hold on to the desk if you feel like you couldn't get the word out. And I was like, okay, that was one, <laughs> that was one of the first kind of strategies I was given um and then then somehow I just kept going more covert I mean it just wasn't addressed um yeah and I'd have several like meltdowns about it but then I always managed to like get through it you know so really didn't address it until I was in college so mm. So I'm curious, you mentioned when you were younger, you would cry when like you had to read aloud or something. At that mm -hmm. time, did you know that it was stuttering, that you stuttered? I didn't, I didn't know that there was a name for it. I just knew that I felt like I felt my throat like just lock up. So, and I, I think I, 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 associate, I just felt like something was wrong with me. Like everybody can read, why can I? And, and I didn't know why no one could explain it to me. So okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't have a name at that time for me. 
yeah. I just knew that something was off and I didn't know how, I didn't know. And how did yeah. your classmates and teachers respond? So, I mean, mainly like, um, I remember like students, um, uh, other students laughing at me and then like the teacher would, you know, r r reprimand them or, you know, but you know, kids, kids, um, do that, but generally I did a really good job of hiding. So it, I didn't really have a lot of those instances where kids would make fun of me, but when they did, I felt like the majority of the time, like the teachers did like address it. But then also like kids were, you know, they would come up to me afterwards, like, oh, don't worry. Like they're trying to like make me feel better because they see that I'm upset so um you know so I think there was a lot of there were a lot of kids uh, that were that would try to be supportive which I think is is good so yeah, yeah. and did the teachers know that you stuttered or what I don't know I don't know okay. No, they, they, they never, I met, none of the teachers really came up to me and like talked to me about it. The first time that happened when I was in um, seventh grade is when a, a teacher actually like told me, like developed this um, signal where if, if we were like reading aloud and I felt like I couldn't, I would just kind of like do this and then she would like skip me. So it was, that was like, she would, she was trying to help, help me out, you know? So that was, but that didn't happen until seventh grade. So um, where the teacher was trying to help me like present anytime that, I, that, that I had to. And then for example, I remember one time I had to give a, a, a book report, like talk and, um, I was just blocking hardcore and I, the teacher could see that I was getting upset and it was just me up in, in front of the class and the teacher just intervened by asking me questions. And then, and then when, when she started to ask me, then, then I was able to answer and then I was able to get through my, um, book report but then after that I just ran to the bathroom and I was just crying but I was able to present and the teacher f figure out a way to help me present you know which I thought was you know this good way for her to intervene you know instead of just leaving me up there <laughs> blocking no sound you know yeah in, in makes me think that we really need more stuttering awareness and we need to reduce stigma because um, I had a very similar experience throughout my schooling as a child that I clearly stuttered and my teacher is like nobody ever really asked me about it or tried to really support me through it and um um yeah it, it 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 makes me wonder why and i think some of the reasons are like they probably d d d d didn't know how to support me right and um yeah, they probably didn't. And I think a lot of people don't really want to talk about that because they feel like it will make it worse. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the mentality, like just don't talk about it because it will get worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have a twin sister mm -hmm. who, does she stutter? No. She d d d d doesn't, 
So when I was younger, I would rely on her sometimes to do stuff for me, but not, not a lot, but I would at times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what that was like to have a twin sister who didn't stutter, like was stuttering something you guys spoke about? Not directly, but like my sister like knew that sometimes I had trouble talking. And I think, I think eventually we figured out that it was stuttering, but you know, she was always really patient with me. She never, you know, she would try to help me out as, as much as I, I, I as, as much as she, she could. It was especially like at you know when you started when we started like talking on 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 the phone more we had to make certain phone calls that kind of became a big theme where i would have her like call for me or you know i or i, I couldn't do anything phone related so i became dependent on her for that um like even like calling my, my uncle to ask oh because I, I remember as a situation like when we we were expecting my, my uncle to come for, 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 for dinner and um, and then I was asked to call him to check when when he would come and um, I just couldn't like do it you know I just made an excuse, oh, you know, I don't want to call Iman, can you call please? Or, you know, I'm, I'm busy right now. It was kind of, you know, it was just like a simple phone call. I, I remember that, I think I was like 14 or something. And then my grandpa, I remember him saying, he's like, you can call, why can't you call? And then I was like, just, you know, he didn't get it, you know, obviously, but I mean, I was going through it and nobody really knew. So. So, so at that time, did your sister know that the reason you were asking her to make these calls was because you stuttered? Probably. I mean, I didn't, okay. I didn't really talk about, oh, make calls for me because I stutter, but she like, you know, she would help, help me out if, if, if needed, you know? So. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of like, it, it, it makes me think like the same thing like in school for example that it just seems like there's like the concept of the conspiracy of silence around stuttering yeah, yeah. <laughs> people just d d don't talk about it it's just they d d don't want to address it and it's interesting and yeah it's like it's like a a vicious cycle because like we're made to think that stuttering is this bad thing and we should try to speak like everyone else is speaking and then we feel like we can't talk about it because it's like this bad thing and then others feel like they can't talk about it because they see that we feel shameful about it and so yeah or the only time that they ever see it is basically with me it was like when I'm having a, um, a meltdown about it because I'm blocking and basically all I did w was block when when I was e, 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 e younger like I didn't even like stutter or showed any like stuttering until I think I was like I don't know like what when I started seeing v Vivian because every when I was growing up it was just silent like silent blocking that that was how I stuttered that was it yeah, and I wonder if that's because you were 
were trying to hide your stuttering because you yeah. were from everyone around you that stuttering isn't okay. It's something that you should try to hide or, or, or fix. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I just don't I don't remember ever hearing myself stutter until I met Vivian. So yeah. Well, Vivian Vivian would say that actually my my stutter manifested into a bunch of fillers. Like Vivian would say like the um, you know, was like um 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 I would started and I started to introduce other other tricks, but in my mind I felt like how but I never really felt like I repeated a lot. It was mainly just it was a block or then I started introducing some some fillers because the blocks were taking so long that you know there was a lot of silence and I think maybe that's why I started putting in fillers you know yeah, that could be especially because of the reactions of others like when oftentimes yeah. when we block uh, others will kind of interrupt us or sometimes yeah. intentionally sometimes unintentionally so I I feel like using filler words at that point is just a way of like holding the floor like hey i'm still talking <laughs> i'm still talking yeah yeah like just wait hold on wait yeah <laughs> yeah um and also your brother stutters uh, i actually have two brothers that stutter okay one one that's he's he stutters more o overtly the other one is co he's covert so yeah so you have two brothers and a sister no i have four brothers and a sister wow okay yeah so i have a a twin sister and then i have four half brothers on my dad's side okay so, and yeah What's the age difference? So my brother, he's three years older than me. He he's a more of a covert stutter, and then another brother who's seven years younger than I am. He's more of an overt stutter. So people know him more as a person that stutters because he he shows it and more so the the other one people don't really know that he does but he goes through periods where he like blocks like uh you know he's blocking a lot and then i remember one of the times when he was going through it his wife started talking to me she said i don't know what's going on you know she like didn't know <laughs> like Cause he would, they would be talking and she's like, I'd be talking with him. And he just like, you know, was having a really hard time talking to me. And I don't know what, what's going on. And then at the time I, when I was in, in, in Kuwait, I was talking more about stuttering and I was kind of participating in different uh, stuttering groups. So a lot of my family members knew that I was, like, you know, in the the stuttering field, kind of dealing with people who, who stutter in, in Kuwait. And then she saw some of my um, posts. And then and then one time we had a, a, conver a, a conversation and she randomly started talking to me about it. And then my brother also started talking to me about it. He's like, yeah, I, I think I, I, I stutter. And I never knew that he did either, so I don't know. Uh, and and so did you all grow up in the same home in Kuwait? So yeah, we grew up together. So when I when Iman and I, my sister and I left for um, the state, he was ten. The one the one that I'm telling you about who who is covert right now or has has always been covert. Um, so we grew up together until. Yeah, I, he was around 10 and the other one was around, he was younger, you know, like three or, you know. So then we were disconnected. We didn't see each other for 
um, I'm going to say like 10 years. So, and then we reconnected again um, more and more. And then when I moved to Kuwait, I, again, I kind of, we can, obviously I reconnected more with them. So, yeah. yeah. So growing up, there's three people who stutter in the home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like curious about that. Like, like. Well, my dad, my dad has six kids basically, and three of us stutter. So that's fifty percent. That's a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm wondering like what that was like. If you guys ever talked about stuttering. Yeah. Um, no yourselves if anyone else ever talked about it with you guys no so there was really only the only thing when we reconnected like when i reconnected with my family again like um i remember my brother who was seven years younger than i am he was having a really hard time um making phone calls actually because we had decided to do a family reunion in London. So my sister and I flew um, to London and then they flew from Kuwait to, to L L L London. And then my brother at the time he wanted, he wanted help to call uh, to try to book some tickets for a, football game and he started asking me to do it and I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to speak on the phone either and then he's like well I, he was explaining to me that he like has a hard time with the phone and then that was kind of a moment where I was like I realized that he was having a hard time but then I never really told him that I had a hard time and then I ended up convincing him that he had to do it and then I couldn't do it so then he ended up doing it. And then I remember him getting on the phone and he was struggling, but he made the phone call. And so at the time, my my stepmom like started to talk, like we had a conversation about, about it. You know, like, yeah, Fahad has a hard time stuttering or talking sometimes. And then and then and then I ended up like talking to her about that more be like yeah do you remember when I was little having a, a hard time she's like yeah but you only had a hard time for a, a little bit and then and then you you were fine but Fahad had a really hard time because she had to go talk to um the teachers and and the school because he he actually apparently had a lot of secondary behaviors where he would like bang like bang his head against the wall sometimes to in order to get like words out so it was like <clears throat> he went through a period apparently where it was severe and she ended up finding this um uh counselor at school who worked with him actually and she's not a a, a speech therapist but she ended up basically finding all the kids who who, who stuttered at, at, at school and doing this group. They didn't really call it as a stuttering group, but it was a group. And she worked on like speaking and confidence and like kind of building up their ability to like, you know, basically she was doing a lot of desensitization, you know, and I don't know without really knowing what it is, but anyways, they, he did really well and they ended up doing this like um, play for for the parents and the parents came and they watched all the kids who 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 stutter conduct this this play and my brother got an an award and so it was all this 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 counselor actually did a really good job not being a speech therapist. And ever since then, my brother, like, stuttering doesn't really phase him, you know? Like, he knows he has a hard time, but he naturally gets on the sound and will just stick there, will stick with it and, like, talk and get through it. He 
makes eye contact. He doesn't avoid, like he doesn't really have all these weird behaviors that I had, you know? Mm. So I don't know. I thought, I thought that was really interesting for me that he had, it, thankfully had a really good experience with this, the school counselor, you know? Yeah. Ooh, we need to get this counselor's <laughs> information because <laughs> they sound more effective than the large majority of speech therapists who I agree, yeah. come across who treat stuttering. Yeah. Like, p p I mean, right now, he, experts. most of the, I know, then like, I feel like my brother went, when I talked to him, like he, he doesn't have like this fear aspect when he's talking, you know, now, like he just talks, you know, he talks. He is, you know, the only time I remember him worrying about it is when he had to do the, 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 the aisles, which is, you know, the, the, the English language, um, Test that a lot of foreign students have to take in in order to enter any uh, u, 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 university. So, and for the speaking section, he wanted like a report from a speech therapist that says that he 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 stutters. So then it. If he stuttered during the the speaking part, then not, then the 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 examiner wouldn't you know take away any any points for that you know so he just had to prove that he stuttered officially and I feel like that was the only time he ever was like I need a report that shows that I do because I don't want them to um, dock me any points mm -hmm. but he was advocating for himself so. Which yeah, is, yeah, which again, it sounds like maybe the school counselor I know, right? Build his self advocacy skills too. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so uh, is there any family history like aunts, uncles, parents, gr gr grand parents who stutter? Well, I I only have a uh, a cousin on on my dad's side that th that also s stutters. So um, that's really the only other person. So I, I don't know. Um, so I feel like it comes from my dad's side, obviously. So um, because yeah, but when I when I've asked my dad about it, like. Did anybody else stutter? He doesn't know. He says, no, I don't, I don't think so. No one knows really. So I don't know. Interesting. I wonder if they knew that you and your two siblings were stuttering, like if they knew it was stuttering. And if so, why do you think it was something that wasn't addressed or spoken about. I think that with um, my brother Fahad, the one I was telling you about, he, when he had a severe he had went through this severe period where it was visible, they did address it. They went and got help. He they actually took him, I think, to some doctors. They didn't know, but. Like in my case, like I never really showed it. I only had these mini meltdowns here and there. So I guess they just didn't think it was a problem or I was going through anything. So I, I don't think that they like intentionally not, like they didn't intentionally not address it. They just didn't, they just thought it was okay and I was doing fine, you know? But I feel like now, like, when when I moved back to Kuwait and they know that I'm I'm a speech uh, I'm I'm a speech therapist as a speech pathologist and I I was part of like a stuttering group and and yeah so we we started talking about it like normally you know so it wasn't like it was pretty open 
So. Yeah, yeah. It, it so makes it's not like, I don't feel like they, it was intentional. I just think that they didn't know, unless it was visible to them. Like when my brother couldn't get any words out, he was banging his head, like, it was like extreme, right? So then that's, yeah. Yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm thinking back to my own experience and I think it was quite similar. Like my parents and siblings knew that I stuttered, but it wasn't, it wasn't really sp sp spoken about. And I think they just sort of figured that I was okay because yeah. I was still d d d d doing well in school. I still had friends. Mm -hmm. and Me too, yeah. Yeah, and it seemed like it wasn't really um, uh, too imp p p p p impactful. But, um, and like, I think it's also like, like they didn't know how to help, right? Like when they perceived it to be problematic, they did what most people would do. Oh, let's contact a speech therapist. Exactly, yeah. And so I went to a speech therapist when I was a kid, like third or fourth grade, and it was just evident really quickly that she didn't know much about stuttering and she was trying to get you to not stutter. <laughs> huh? She's trying to get you to not stutter. Exactly. She was exactly. Encouraging, That's the problem. Me, encouraging me to use these fluency enhancing techniques and like, I just wasn't into it. And because I knew that like, okay, I can use these here with you, though I'm not even gonna try to use these anywhere else, really. Um, and yeah, um, yeah it, 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 it makes me think that like, again, I think what we really need to see is, um, like a cultural shift in how stuttering is viewed in like mm -hmm. we need more of an understanding and an acceptance of d d d d different ways that people communicate and express themselves and also just like we need to reduce stigma like it's okay to stutter it's okay to talk about stuttering yeah, I agree. Like when Vivian told me that it was okay to stutter, I didn't know that. And it was really like powerful. I was, I cried because I think I was like, well, I don't know when I saw Vivian, but I think I was like 26 or 27. And it was like, oh, stuttering's okay. And, and it was like a big deal. It was a big deal for me to know that because every therapy that I've ever done, I, I felt really bad because I could not implement what was being asked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, and I would feel bad. And it's like, okay, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the like this odd case that they can't figure out, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's I was actually, <laughs> that's how I felt. That's how I felt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about this recently, and it, it's pretty cruel, actually, that we live in a world that this occurs. Like, we grow up speaking differently, and we're made to believe that the way that we speak is incorrect or wrong and that we should try to speak like everybody else speaks. Mm -hmm. So 
ooh, that results in like a lot of conflict because it's like, okay, well, I'm going to try to speak like everyone else, but it's kind of hard. So I'm going to like sacrifice a lot of things and like try to hide this part of who I am. And then once we reach like a breaking point that it's like, man, this is just too much. Like I can't like live like this anymore. And then yeah. we go and seek help from an expert and that expert says, oh yeah. yeah, let me try to help you speak like everyone else even more. You're not doing a good enough job trying to speak like everyone else. Yeah. So here, try these strategies and see if you can like blend in even more and speak like everyone else. And it's just cruel because it just does more harm. Like when we're in a really vulnerable state and seek help outside of ourselves and that help comes in the form of actually um causing more harm to us mm -hmm. something's not something's really wrong there i agree 100 percent. yeah i agree yeah i mean i don't know it's kind of like i feel i feel like it's a shame that maybe like speech pathology programs need to do better job educating SLPs in the area of stuttering or, I don't know. 100%, 100%, like, because it really is a shame. Like it, it, it just like creates even more problems for us when we seek help from experts. Like it pu 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 pulls us farther away from ourselves and that causes a lot of harm it's hard to recover from that it, yeah. it, it 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 makes me think of like like conversion therapy right when mm -hmm. someone is gay and they grow up in this world that values um uh heterosexuality over non-heterosexuality and so they know they're d d d d d d different and um and 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 because of how the world is responding to their differences they learn to conform to how the world wants them to d d d d d d be right and that causes yeah. like, a lot of conflict and suffering and trauma and yet they like there's a lot of pressure for them to maintain this facade. And then I feel like it's kind of the similar thing. Like they might reach a point where it's like, okay, I need help because this is just like too much. And somebody who they trust says, or even they might choose on their own volition, like, okay, let's go to conversion therapy. And then in conversion, so you'll be fixed. <laughs> the expert. Right. It's like the same thing. Like they yeah, yeah. bring them, they pull them even farther away from themselves and from the real solution. And like, that's just so d d d d d d d damaging. I agree. Yeah. It's heavy stuff. I guess the, the point is, is like self-acceptance, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know? like, and it's a it's a long road, but like I think when you find someone like, I'm just gonna say Vivian because she's the only person that has ever helped me with with, with stuttering, you know, to just get some sort of path, and then there's a lot of things fall into place. Then you start being like, okay, I can, you know, you know, you start at least feeling like you're you 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 you're okay you're not trying to fix something you know and 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 it, even just by that it actually helps you communicate better for me at least i i felt like i was able to be more open to you know mm. 
terms of com communication, you know? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little more about that. So um, you, you, well, so you, you came to the United States when you were, how old again, you said, I'm sorry, either. Like I was almost 13. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm curious if like, like, how, how that experience was like, if, 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 if like people re reacted d d d d differently to your stuttering in the United States compared to in Kuwait. Um, I don't think there was a big difference in terms of reaction. You, I mean, I was covert really. So, I mean, the people didn't really notice it only showed up in school. Really, so um, actually, what I could say is that my teacher at, at school, when I moved to the states, she was most helpful to me than any other teacher prior. So in Kuwait, nobody even talked to me about it. So at least this, some of the teachers did attempt in in the states to talk to me about it and to develop like strategies for me to feel more comfortable in class. It, so they weren't, they didn't force me to do anything I didn't want to do or didn't, you know? So yeah. I don't know, I've had several teachers in middle school and in, 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 in high school that, that were like that, um, so. Mm. And then, and then, uh, how was your experience in college? You went to university in Oregon. Yeah. Um, so basically, like middle school, like the first year when I was there, so that was Kuwait to the U.S. That uh, that first year, I was having a, a really hard time because I was transitioning, and then. Um, and then, then I just really went deep covert, like I was covert, like maybe like three years where I really had this like fluency thing going. And I even forgot to the a point where I stuttered and then like junior year in high school, it just like exploded, you know, like, for like a, a period. And then this is when I had to speak to the teachers. And the teachers were like working with me in terms of presenting, reading aloud, et cetera. Um, and then again, I just went covert again and then college hit and it was a nightmare. Like couldn't even, freshman year, it was so bad. I would cry, I would go through the like, syllabus of each um, course that I'm taking to see like if I had to do a presentation or not or then if I found out that I did I would try to uh, change my class and, and drop it so I was doing all of these things to not talk basically and then you know when when you get older you start making your own like um, doctor's appointments, you know, so like I remember needing to call like the, the, the dentist once and I couldn't, then they, they would answer and then I would hang up and then I would go through this whole period of me calling and like hanging up and then I start to cry and then I would ask my sister to call. So that freshman year and then my mom found out that my, my, um, uh, University had uh, a, a, a speech and hearing clinic. So then she, my mom was trying to help me. So she said, why don't you go there? Anyway, so I, I went, it was, I mean, it was a lot of fluency shaping, but then I ended up meeting other people who, who stutter. And then I, and one of the pro, uh, professors that 
taught was his name. He's known. Uh, uh, Glenn what, what, Waybright or Waybright? I don't know. Anyways, he's known. He was known. Like, uh, anyway. So I ended up observing his his clinic. I I, I went to his his the stuttering clinic, and then had these com started to have more conversations about stuttering, which I've never done before. So I kind of got exposure, you know, mm. but I was still pretty covert and it was mainly fluency shaping. So, and, and at that time, did you think that you were the only person who's experiencing these things? Like, like, did, 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 did you know that like other people stutter and also try and hide in similar ways? No, you did. because I thought a lot of people who stuttered showed it. And because that's the only people who I met, like you can visibly see them, you know? Um, so I imagine I had a similar experience. Like I didn't know that anyone else experienced the same things I was experiencing. So I was like, man, this is crazy. Like I'm alone, yeah. I don't So, um, so I imagine that, that, that had like a, 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 a big impact on you actually meeting other people who stutter and who coped with it in similar ways that you did. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was interesting, but I was still like, I was still scared with identifying this whole, like I'm a person who, who stuttered. I was still kind of in the mindset, like, you know, when can I make it go away? Or how can I make it, you know, just, you know, I, I, my, my goal was I, because all of the therapist goals were for me to stutter less or not show stuttering at all. So that's what it was. So anyways, the first two years I went to this, the, the, the speech and, and hearing clinic. And I thought I was doing well because it was at least a place where I started to talk about stuttering. I started to meet other people who, who stutter. So that was, there were a lot of positive things. And then at that time I decided I wanted to be a, a speech therapist as well. So I declared it as a, a major. So I was as a, a, a speech and hearing science major. And then, um, but, you know, so I, then I started to become covert again, but for me, in my mind, I was like, oh, speech therapy is like working, you know? You know, <laughs> so like, so for like next two years, it was like, you know, I just thought like stuttering was kind of gone because I was having a lot of fluency again, this false. And, 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 and again, like you said, it's super b b b backwards because the experts, the speech therapists yeah. you saw in your life, they were trying to make you more fluent. They were trying to get yeah. you to be somebody you're not to speak like, like everybody else does. And, 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 and like, like that's, that's, that's hard to recover from. And, and, and at the time, that's what you wanted to, because every- Exactly, because right. that's all I thought, that's all I thought that, that, that I thought, that's all I thought was, was the goal, you know, that's the goal. So, um, so then I reached that fluency and I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be as, as a speech pathologist. And so I was like feeling good about myself. Like I, I had resolved my, my stuff. <laughs> So, um, which is horrible because as soon as I started grad school, the, you know, severe blocking started and I, it was like, I couldn't deal with it. Like I thought I got to a point where I was like, I need to like drop out. I can't, you know, do this. You know, I really was, were, I was thinking about all of, all of these things. I'm like, how could I help other people? I can't help myself, you know, because I was struggling a lot. And then, you know, so I, and again, I'm, it's not, again, it's not your 
fault at all. That's a very normal yeah. response to what you were experiencing considering your life experiences up to that point, right? Yeah. Which is just like, again, goes back to like, things need to change. Like things need Honestly, to I think if I wasn't covert, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say that because some people who, who, who are overt may think differently, but I feel like if I was overt, I would have to address it, you know? But being covert or having this like these islands of fluency that I felt like where to the point where I forgot that I I stuttered because I was just, you know, for like two years, I'd be like, oh, it's gone finally. I'd really have these like thoughts and I wouldn't even think about it. But then like, then it shows up when I don't want it to, you know? like grad school first semester and you know I'm like what so so you went to so for me I feel like the fluency hindered me in a way like because it just like delayed me dealing with it or addressing it mm. that's, how, that's how I feel for for my experience at least and you're getting constant reinforcement from the outside world, from everyone outside of yourself that like, hey, fluency is good. Like, yeah. this is, you know. Um, so, so, so you, you went to grad school for speech pathology and, you know, one would think that that could be a place that's really supportive, that could really help you in your struggles with your own communication as you're working to um, and learning how to help others with mm -hmm. struggles with their communication. But it sounds like that wasn't really the case. Like, I'm curious if, yeah. Well, actually, the my they 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 were helpful it's not they they were un, un, understanding they were supportive um i saw some of the professors to to help me with with my stuttering i just didn't think that they really knew how to help me they wanted to help me but they didn't know how fully okay. but they were accommodating supportive anything i i needed i felt like i could go talk to them by but they really didn't know how to help me. Okay. How, how to improve the situation or how to, you know, because I was super anxious about doing assessment, doing just anything, <laughs> you know? And so I remember even when we, well, one of my first assessment I did like, I went and talked to my my clinical supervisor, and I said, you know, I, I'm 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 gonna stutter. She's like, it's fine, just do it, you know. And she knew, but I obviously, she, you know, she was supportive. It's not like she, you know, dinged me for anything. You know, it was like they just didn't know uh, how how to help me. I expressed it. They was they were they would listen and they would support and try to, uh, to accommodate. So, okay, to the best of their ability. And then, what led you to seek help that time? Like when you were, because you started. Because I was desperate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, I was so desperate. Like. I was in DC trying to like calling every therapist I could find, you know, try to get help. And then I contacted one therapist and then she told me that she was full, but she said, oh, I know this uh, uh, professor at University of um, Maryland uh, she specializes in stuttering. 
here is here's here's her email and it was vivian so vivian's email and then and then i emailed vivian and then i was like waiting for her to like respond i had my computer out i was waiting and then she like i and i think i like emailed her multiple times because she hadn't like responded that that day because i i was anxious and i i needed her to like she like responded by saying i am busy i will get back to you by the end of the day or something <laughs> something like that i i remember that i was like okay she should at least acknowledge that she got my email um and then she told me about saturday group and then oh no for, first she said why don't you come in and and, and meet me first and, and then i i was like okay yeah tomorrow i'm there you know and so I went to her office and then we had a conversation and then she told me about Saturday group. And then I started like that Saturday, I think like, I was like ready. It was like, I just like, just give me anything. I'm going to try anything. Yes. And I'm glad that this time <laughs> it was actually some helpful stuff that Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was offered to you. So I'm um, on that note. What were some of the things that were most helpful in, um, in 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 speech therapy with Vivian and in group therapy? I think the first part is that because it was group therapy, and I hadn't done that before, and then. Second, like, um, you know, this whole idea of like stuttering openly and all this. And I was just, I was willing to try it because I was like desperate. It literally, I felt like I wanted to try anything. So I, I, I was like, let me just give this a shot. Like, I don't care, you know? And I really took everything in, like whatever Vivian said, I was like really focused. And I remember like within, within two weeks, I was like open stuttering when I was ordering at, at Starbucks. And it was like the first time I'd heard myself stutter. And I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> and then, then this is when I say, I know. <laughs> and then I started, I remember feeling like, oh my God, like I, I, I stuttered like openly and then, then I started listening to stutter talk because I, you know, I guess w w one of the group members had mentioned it and I, I was like, okay, let me listen to it. And then I would listen to like two episodes a day because and it was like really therapeutic for me to hear people stutter for like, and you know how, how, how their episodes were, they go on for like, 60 to 90 minutes sometimes and so I, I feel like I would I'd be listening to people who stutter for like at least two hours a day and I was doing that for like I, I did that for like two months because they had a lot of episodes and I was just like really really into it yeah. and then I ended up emailing the host because he was a covert stutter and then then he ended up inviting me to do this podcast and I was like oh my god and this was all like within you know four months or like three to four months of being uh, you know being really open about it and starting therapy with Vivian so hmm. yes that also helped me a lot like when I was in the process of uh, a lot, yeah. The fact that I stutter, it helped a lot hearing other people stutter and talk about stuttering. Um, well, and like just learning because I didn't know a lot about it, you know, just like, okay, I know like, you know, just all these people's ex experiences. And so I, it was super helpful to me. So. Yeah. So sh shout out to Stutter Talk and all the hosts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Peter, Peter was the one that interviewed me and like, I really 
the conversation I had with him and you knew I felt like he just did wonders like and he's his voice was calming and I felt like I was just in this like just such a great place with stuttering and I was proud to share like my experience and I don't know yeah shout out to stutter talk yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so you you mentioned one of the things that was most helpful was stuttering openly or open stuttering and I'm curious if you could um describe what does that mean so stuttering without control and holding back just kind of letting it just let it go <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's difficult to do and I you know right now I need to start working on on open stuttering again I feel like you know being absent from therapy for a long time like I feel like uh, some old habits have crept up you know so um I think it's really important to make that a goal even if you've been through therapy like it's just kind of rewind and you know um, I think it's kind of easy to go through therapy and then kind of forget about it. And honestly, some of these hardcore habits that you have, if you don't check them, they do come up again. Like yeah. for me, yeah. it's fillers or holding back. So, you know, and yeah, so I have to, I have to work on it. So I'm curious, like you say you have to work on it I'm curious like like what's motivating you I guess like, what would you like to be differently if you worked on it and like achieved what you hope to do I feel like I would stutter more comfortably and I feel like right now I'm going through a period where when when I stutter my tendency is to hide rather than show so I do need to develop some goals for myself. So I do want, I guess it's that comfort aspect and speaking, you know, just being, being me. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like that's where, where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm out now. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can totally realize that. It's like, you want to like embrace yourself more, like you, you, you get closer to, your true self and like stuttering is a part of that like expressing yourself yeah. in a way that you feel true to yourself because I do feel like I I'm now more like I feel like I I hold back sometimes often actually to if I'm honest with myself and um I will show some stuttering when I I'm consciously making it like a goal of mine. But I, I feel like before when I went through therapy and all this, like it kind of stuttering, like showing stuttering just became more natural. And now I feel like I'm in a period where it's not as natural for me to show stuttering like I did before. So it's kind of the place where I want to get back to, you know. Let's do it. I believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So. Um, you 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 mentioned it's hard, and I agree. And I'm curious if you have advice for um, people who, let's say, are covert who want to stutter more openly and are having a hard time with it. Mm -hmm. I feel like a good place to start is by doing your fear hierarchy so with me like um my husband like he knows that I I stutter and when we're talking he'll catch me sometimes and be like why are you holding back <laughs> I'll say so like I guess finding people who are kind of willing well they'll want to hear you stutter and want want you to be who you are and I think finding those people and just let it, just let it go. It's right there. Yeah, uh, you, 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 you mentioned a 
year hierarchy like yeah how's that like could you explain that so i guess just um i guess finding um a person or a place where you're willing to show like you, you, you you're ugly stuttering or anything it's not ugly it's not ugly <laughs> So I, however ugly it can get, but you need to stutter openly, like however it comes out, it comes out. And I think you need to find that safe place, which is the lowest fear of a person or a place that you're, I don't know. So you need to, so every person needs to figure that out. Yeah. What, what that comfort zone is where you're, are willing to be vulnerable, I guess, you know, and just show it the way it comes out so yeah where you're willing to do the thing that you've been trying to avoid for your whole life exactly yeah it's hard yeah. and then it is hard it is yeah. hard and it's and it's easy for covert stutterers i think to just get back into the covert cycle hmm. i feel like it can get it can get i think if you don't consciously sometimes you know, work on, work on that, then I think you can go back to being covert. And I feel like I have slipped into that sometimes because, but at the same time, it's not like I'm going back to completely how I was before therapy. I still actively talk about myself as, as a person who stutters, even if I don't show it. I actively talk about stuttering. I so I, I don't hide that part. I never hid that part, you know. I, I I don't hide that anymore. But I'll still get like challenges from people. Uh you 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 don't stutter. I don't I, I don't hear you, you know. So I have to explain. And so people know me as a person who stutter generally. So I, I I've never like had to hide that. It's just, I feel like it's the showing it part, you know? Yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> like you tell somebody you stutter and they say you d d d d d don't stutter. That's like, a, that, I, I, I haven't really considered it like this, but that's like gaslighting, um, <laughs> honestly. Like you're like sharing your experience with somebody. You're like, this is, my experience and they're saying that. no you know it's not <laughs> it's, like, it's like what yeah i know right so i think it's kind of hard or 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 people people will say yeah but you you, you don't stutter anymore I said well i said you don't see me stutter sometimes but i i do this stutter or you might not not notice that uh, that i stutter but I, I, I am a person who, who, who stutters. So I do actively like talk about myself as a person who stutters. I never, like, I'm not at, like, I don't, I don't hide that ever really. So. Yeah. And, and then so on, on, on the fear hierarchy thing, like, would you like, it sounds like what you're saying is like, start in a low fear situation where you feel comfortable or willing to risk right like to, to yeah do this thing that you've been trying to avoid your whole life and then like is and then like gradually like climb up that fear hierarchy like continue yeah. so you, you know like having a low mid and 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 and, and high feared so I guess developing goals for each of those. So I think gradually the mid will become low and the high will become mid. So I think the fear hierarchy kind of drops the more, you know, where where you expand your, you know, comfort zone, I guess, of where you're willing to to stutter and all that. And also it doesn't have to be just showing this stuttering you know, like a, a high feared situation can be like just a, a, a identifying yourself as, as a person 
who, who, who stutters, right? Like you don't have to show anything. You could just say, I, I, yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm a person who stutters or if you have to d disclose in like any way, right? That can be a, a good high feared or just showing up to something that you've never gone to or you or you've always wanted to go to, but you haven't because you stutter. So, so you develop different goals to for different um, for different levels, right? Yeah. And gradually you can move up. So of where you're willing to show it. Like for me, I was when I was interviewing for jobs, I would um, actually, uh, I would disclose that I, I, I stuttered. Or if, if I didn't, I would just stutter anyways. But I feel like it never really affected the outcome of the interview. At least I don't, I don't think it's because I am, I kind of show up as myself with confidence and I project the knowledge or for, for, for the position, right? So I feel like a lot of people will react to you the way that you present yourself. So regardless, uh, but maybe some people won't, I don't know. So, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, so. Yeah. That, that, that seems like a really effective way of uh, conquering or like tackling fear, which in my experience was like one of the biggest challenges I faced with my stuttering. Another challenge was the shame I experienced mm -hmm. when I stuttered. I'm curious if you have some advice on how to de 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 deal with that or face that. Oh, shame. I mean, I've, I felt a lot of, sh yeah. yeah shame, is, shame is heavy, yeah. Shame is, shame is heavy. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about shame? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, um, that's a good question. Like, I think like planning to experience shame. So like, yeah. like, like changing your idea of what's a success, right? So like, yeah, yeah. if you know you want to work on this, it's like, okay, how can I reduce shame? And I think a really solid way is like planning to experience that shame and, um, and, and be prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, so you're prepared for it, and then yeah. you're tolerating it, not even just tolerating it, though, like, like, almost, like, seeking it out and, like, accepting it and allowing it to, um, be there. Yeah, and then, and then, like, recognizing that as a success, because it is a success, like, it's really, it is, yeah, yeah. experience, yeah. so, like, one, one thing I'm thinking of is like when I started um, to participate in class in college and the first time I raised my hand in class, like it was a very conscious decision. I was like, okay, I want to work on um, reducing the fear and shame I experienced related to my stuttering. So. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to ask a question in this class. I'm going to raise my hand and ask a question. And like, I felt so much shame. Like I, I like turned red and was like sweating. And it was like this, yeah. like, like I got hot. It was just like a lot, a lot happening. And, and, and it was super helpful to like have the support from, um, others and having the knowledge that like, okay, this is a success, like that will be a success. So I left class that day, like viewing it as a 
success. And then yeah. next d- 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 day in class, I raised my hand again, spoke up in class and it was still hard, but it was a little bit less hard. And then like b- b- by the end of the semester, I was like raising my hand in class. All <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I no longer had sweaty, sweaty, uh, <laughs> sweaty shirts. <laughs> I left class. Yeah, that, that's true. So I think planning for it for sure helps. And yeah. yeah, that's what I had to do. So uh, yeah, part of the yeah. assignment. Yeah. Um. So Nadia, you you mentioned uh you're you're m- m- married now. Mm-hmm. Congratulations! It was re- recent, right? Yeah. Yeah, when was it, or when did you get married? Well, actually, it was technically a few months ago, okay. but we haven't we didn't really make the announcement until last month. So okay. because I we didn't know I we were hoping to do some some celebration, but we'd know it with COVID nothing would happen. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, you mentioned, so your husband is Spanish. He lives in Spain now. And um, you mentioned that his family d- 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 doesn't know that you stutter really, or you're not open with them about stuttering or. or yeah. I remember you mentioned something and, and you, you mentioned that it was like, you know, something on your mind. And I'm, I'm curious if you have a plan of like how to handle that, or if you just want to like talk about this situation. Well, I mean, I, the people that I've met in Spain so far don't know that I'm a person who, who stutters and, uh, um, my husband, Edu, like, I told, I've actually asked him, so how do I say I, I stutter you know, in, in Spanish or, or, or I'm a, I'm a person who, who, who stutters. And then he like translated for me and he said, he said, yeah, but you know, it's, it's not good to say that. And I said, why? So like, we went this back and forth. He's like, I don't know, like, why are you, why don't you just st- stutter? Like, so I, I don't know that I remember having a conversation with him about that, but that was a, a while ago. When I first went went to Spain, we had this conversation, but then he bought me a, a, a book once as well that in Spanish about stuttering. And I I don't know, it was it was it was for a a, a Christmas present, and then I opened it in in front of his his family. So there was that kind of like and you, you know, when you when you open up a present, you show, oh, I got this book, right? You know, so like they knew, I, they knew, I, they know I'm a speech therapist. They know I work with people who who stutter, but I never like have never like fully open stuttered with them, or I haven't like declared that I'm a person who stutters. Um, I don't really have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. But like, I don't feel like I'm holding back though. Like I just, I, I I, do like, I do show some stuttering. I do naturally sometimes, but like it hasn't been like a main focus, but I don't feel like they know like, oh, Nadia is a person who stutters. Like they don't, they don't have that. Mm. And I haven't like advertised like I, I do I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that they would treat me any different. I just, yeah, I have to like. I feel like I would like to be more open about it. I would. I feel like it's a, a part of me. I just don't know. I think they would be like, okay, maybe, or I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's like a right or a wrong way, right? It seems like yeah. you'll just have to make a decision about like how you want to I don't know if you even want to explicitly advertise that you're somebody who stutters or if you just want to yeah. stutter but I also feel like it's good because I feel like you know like even like when Edu and I first met like he 
you know, he liked the fact that that was something different about me, you know? So he liked that, which is good, right? <laughs> but like at the same time, when I try to translate some of the words I want to say in Spanish, like he says, but that doesn't sound like he, there's like this negative connotation too, to like saying I'm a person who, who stutters in, in, in Spanish to him. He's like, it's like, why, well, like, why would you say it, it doesn't really sound it doesn't sound good if you say that. So I don't know if I, I don't Yes, know. sounds like Maybe a decision. It's people, that, it's people that, that like, I feel like a lot of people though have naturally just associated like put stuttering in like the negative box, you know, kind of, right? It's something taboo or I don't know. So, right, it's not just, people from Spain, right? It's just like, people yeah. do it that way, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a decision. Yeah. You all need to make yourself. Yeah, like, I, I yeah. Um, yeah, there is a lot of stigma around stuttering and- I agree, I agree. And there's, people don't know a lot about it either so yeah for me personally like especially those who I interact with often who I consider to be close with like I want them to know that I stutter if I mean yeah I don't know like I certainly wouldn't I certainly wouldn't like couldn't hide a part of myself from the people I'm close with because yeah you know and that mm -hmm. way of like like fighting the stigma too is like just true yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah it is that's true so anyway I'm curious to hear more about how that goes I'm confident it'll Good, good, good. It will work out. <laughs> oh well, like whatever you decide. Yeah. Um, Nadia, so I've been thinking about intersectionality quite a bit lately, and how uh, people can face multiple forms of uh, oppression toward different aspects of their identity. Mm -hmm. and I'm curious if you want to share some reflections or experiences about um, about your experience as a um, multiracial woman who stutters and like the overlapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like since I've been in the Middle East, I feel like especially for like women, I think, um, I think it's people always focus more on your looks and they are there. So as long as you like look pretty and I think you get a pass. So I really haven't faced, I feel like a lot of challenges in terms of like being a woman who, who stutters. I feel like because even when I do stutter, people will make a comment like, well, but at least you're, 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 you, you're pretty or you have a nice smile or it's kind of always followed with a comment like, you know, about your looks, so, which and is like, I think, I think for some people that, that would be like, <laughs> annoying you know what i mean like it is but i mean what what i mean what am i supposed to do like i i mean i i don't know i think this is this has been my my experience mm -hmm. kind of always kind of followed up with like yeah but you know you have all these other things so it's fine right so it kind of like covers it maintains it right mm -hmm. but um yeah, I don't, I mean, I feel like that's kind of what I've been my experience here in 
in the Middle East. In terms of as a speech therapist who, who stutters, people, people like it. Like when I say it and they're like shocked, but, but and they view me as courageous. And, you know, and so I've helped a lot of people who stutter here and especially um, like the, the, the parents of, uh, of kids that, that I've helped, they're really, you know, Im Im impressed and like, you know, kind of view, view like, you know, they're like, I, they, they can look at their kids and see hope that, oh, like she grew up and was able to do this and she's fine because, you know, parents come in and they're like really worried, you know? And so I feel like I have presented a lot of like m good positive model of a person who who stutters that that is leading a normal life that has a profession, you know, and it's not a big deal, you know, like, so I feel like I've really projected that and, and I'm really open about it. And I feel a lot of parents appreciate it. So I've gotten, I actually really haven't gotten any negative uh, pushback on that, which surprises, surprised me, so. That is, that's huge though, that yeah. having the kind of impact that you are on as many people as you're having. Like imagine if you had that kind of support when you were a young child. Yeah. So. I'm and I think, I think, I think that's really, I mean, I feel like that's actually one of the biggest things that I've done here is to create that kind of like, put it like, it's okay, it's okay. It's, you know, we can work through the challenges you know there's you know he can still like it's not the end of the world you know because the parents are get really really worried here especially about um um boys you know because men there's a lot of expectation on men especially when they get older to be able to be the head, head of the family and to um you know, he represents the family, you know, the man. So like, if there's something wrong with him, like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> so, so I think it's really important. Like I, there's this kid that I've been doing therapy with for now three years. He's now in fifth grade and he's now like his mom and I like talk regularly and like, he is so comfortable stuttering openly now. He's been on co commercials here in, in Qatar. And, you know, so like, the, and he's done like in interviews on, on TV, kind of like known now in, 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 in Qatar. And I feel proud of him because he's able to, you know, show up and talk and communicate. And before he, you know, he would just cry or, you know, not, not participate. And three years of therapy has done wonders. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine a kid here, he's, what, uh, he's, in, he's in fifth grade now. He's like doing all these commercials on TV. People know him. Like he's like this mini, he's like famous kind of here because I mean, Qatar is, isn't big. It's like, it's not even, Three million people. So, um, and he's stuttering, uh, showing his stuttering, and he shows his stuttering sometimes. He doesn't show it as much. He does. He does. He. But the thing is, this kid has presented. Uh, he's been like my superstar. I like. We've done this. These these projects where he'd help me present, and we go to like the diff, diff, different grades. So we'll go to second and third and fourth grade and he'll be like he'll he will present to everybody ab, ab, about studying he will teach them and I he kind of he's now my little like therapy partner so <laughs> he's, he's great yeah awesome stuff Nadia yeah you're, you're <laughs> making a huge impact keep thank you keep up the great work 
Thank you, thank you. It's good to make an impact because I feel like these kids need a role model, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And like, yeah. Um, well, Nadia, this has been a nice conversation. Um, again, thanks for joining us or for, for, for taking the time for this. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed our conversation and um, I'm glad that I was able to do it, so. Yeah, and looking forward to what's next. I think you're moving to Hong Kong soon, hopefully. Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for something different. So it'll be, it'll be good, it'll be good. That'll be cool. Yeah, you'll you'll it'll be interesting too. Like, like seeing how stuttering is in Hong Kong. Like how how stuttering. Yeah, is I already connected with a SLP there, and she does a stuttering support group. So I basically she already invited me to help with that. So that's great. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. once this p p pan d d d d d pandemic is over, eventually I'll see you in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll see you in the DC area. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks, All right, Mark. Nadia. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. Bye.